subscribe to TT Girl with the Cyber Biker. Subscribe and like. What it do, YouTube? It's your boy, the Cyber Biker. Coming back with a review video. Uh, I'm down here at Anacostia Park on this lovely day. It's around 70 degrees. Uh, just coming down here to really do a bike review video. Um, of the Cy Russia XF660 1000 watt. That's the bike right there. And uh, stay tuned for the review. The tires that come stock on the XF660 are Kinder branded 26 by 4 inch fat tires. The tires in appearance are soft in texture and the knobs on the tires do a good job of deflecting mildly sharp objects out of the path of the rear tire which is the tire that suffers the most punctures on bicycles. The first generation XF660 comes stock with Chow Yang 26 by 4 inch fat tires and even though those tires are good, these Kinder tires are better in my opinion. The current gen XF660 comes with a new front fork which is VIB branded. The fork is a little stiff in the beginning but once you add a couple of rides to the bike to break it in, you start to feel the suspension it offers when you ride over uneven surfaces or take the bike off road. Coupled with the Kinder tires offers maximum suspension to make your bumpy rides a piece of cake for your commute. Just like the first gen XF660, the fork has locked and unlocked options for your suspension needs. Another change to the current gen XF660 is the braking system. The current gen offers hydraulic disc brakes for more premium stopping power and comes stock on the 660. As an owner of the first gen 660, I will have to say that I prefer this braking system over the mechanical brakes that come stock on the first gen because the hydraulic disc brakes give you confidence that you can brake safely when you're coming to a stop or for emergency braking situations. Located at the top of the handlebars are your front and your rear brake levers that cut off power to the motor effectively, allowing you to stop safely. New for the XF660 model is the S900 bike computer, located at the center of the handlebars. This user-friendly device is simple to use and provides you with useful information with five displays on one screen. The display provides a fuel gauge for range purposes, odometer for the miles you log on the bike, a speedometer to let you know how fast you're going, the pedal assist level you are currently in, and the error message display to alert you of any errors the bike might occur. I'm really loving this screen as it gives the bike a more luxury look, and you can save money on having to purchase separate speedometers and odometers for your bike. The first gen 660 came with the LCD throttle display that only display how much remaining battery power you have. So I'm appreciative that the current gen comes stock with this bike computer. It's very helpful. There's also a menu for you to set up certain parameters of the bike like tire size, speed limit, etc. But I'll save that for another video. Sticking with the handlebars, another new addition is the controller for the S900 bike computer. The first gen model had an entry level controller that had three functions, the bike light, three pedal assist modes to choose from, and a horn button to alert pedestrians and cars that you encounter. The current gen controller controls the S900 computer and is mainly used as a selector. Missing from the controller is the horn button and although I think that it is useful to have a horn, it's not a deal breaker for me. The current gen has three buttons, an up, down, and menu button that's located in the middle. I like this controller option because the first gen came with keys to start your bike up. To turn on this bike, you just simply hold the M button for three seconds and you're ready to ride. One less key on my key ring. Next is the battery, which is still a 48 volt battery with more amp hours. The first generation 660 battery is a 48 volt 10 amp hour battery and was perfect for my 20 mile round trip commute to work. I would arrive to work with 3 out of 4 bars left on the battery indicator. 
With the newly designed battery that offers 13 amp hours, I arrived to work with 4 out of 5 bars left on the battery indicator after a 10 mile ride with the mix of pedal assist 3 and throttle for my commute. The battery has an indicator located at the top of the battery. The battery also gives you the option to charge small accessories like power banks, chargeable speedometers, night lights, as well as your cell phone with the USB port located on the left side of the battery. You can lock your battery onto the bike with the keys that come shipped with the bike. On the right side, you have your on-off power switch and a charging port to charge the battery. Charging usually takes around about three hours to get a full charge. New for the current gen XF660 is the motor. Zippy, fast, powerful are some of the words I can use to describe this motor as it is 10 times better than a first gen 500 watt motor in climbing hills as well as acceleration off the line. The top speed capable with this motor is 27.5 miles per hour or 28 miles per hour if you round it off. When I was searching for another e-bike I had acceleration and hill climbing speed in mind and this motor is perfect for my needs. I don't face many hills but when I do, RIP to those hills. Okay on to the gears. Nothing really new in this department though as it's the same as the first gen XF660. The 1000 watt model comes with the same 7 speed Shimano gear set. I wish it would have came with higher gears like say a 21 gearing system but the amount of other upgrades on this bike outweighs that in my opinion. The gear changes on this 7 speed system are crisp and clean. Cyrusher decided to relocate the controller for the XF660 and I actually like that idea. It gives the rider options of adding other accessories to their bikes whether that be a bottle holder or anything you can bolt down on the up tube of the bike. The box for the controller seems durable enough to withstand rainy days so you don't have to worry about water seeping into the unit. Just dry the bike off after your commute and you should be good. The controller is 48 volts and works well with the battery and bike computer. Cyrusher decided to go with the new seat for this model as a lot of complaints about the old seat led to this change. This new seat is very comfortable as it reminds me of a Cloud9 seat. The cushioning is plush and the look of the seat adds to the luxurious look of the bike. It is perfect for my 20 mile round trip commute. No aches, no pains. Overall, I really love this bike. I mean, I wish I can commute with it uh, every day. Um, it's been raining here in the DMV. So I haven't really been taking it out. I would say I've taken it out three out of five days out the week. Um, but yeah, the bike is very clean. It's very reliable. Um, and other than the fenders that came stock with the bike, uh, the fenders feel very cheap. But um, other than that, the bike just feels very luxurious. I mean, it feels like it should cost way more than how much it actually costs. So I'm very appreciative that uh, Sarusha gave me uh, a good discount on the bike. And that wraps up my review of the Sarusha XF660. I hope that the information contained in this video was very useful for you. To purchase your XF660, simply go to sarusha.com. In the search bar, type in XF660 1000 watts to make your purchase. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment at the bottom. Thank you very much.